Good morning, family. I'm going to read a creation story, a Celtic-Irish creation story by Ella Young, told by Alice Kane. It's titled The Earth Shapers. In Tirna Mo, Bridget was singing, Angus the ever young, Medir the haughty, Ogma the wise, the Dagda, and the others of the Daydanans were all listening. And this is what she sang. Now comes the hour foretold, a God gift bringing a wonder sight. Is it a star newborn? A splendid upspringing out of the night. Is it away from the fountain of youth that is uplifting a foam of delight? Is it a great immortal bird that is winging hither its flight? It is a wave high-crested, melodious, triumphant, breaking in light. It is a star, rose-hearted and joyous, risen from the night. It is a flame from the world of the gods, and love runs before it a quenchless delight. Let the wave break, let the star rise, let the flame leap. Ours, if our hearts are wise, to take and keep. There was silence in Tirna Mo after Bridget finished singing. And then Angus spoke. Strange are the words of your song, and stranger still the music. It was as if the voice of strange worlds was breathing on my face while you sang. And yet, though the sound came closer and closer, and you were singing, it was not you who was singing. Who was singing? The earth was singing, said Bridget. The earth? Is not the earth in the abyss? Is not the earth in the darkness of the void? Who has ever stayed to hear the earth? To hear the sound of it? Or to hear the darkness of it? I have stayed, said Bridget. I have stayed to hear the earth. I have stood and watch the writhing, monstrous life of the earth that devours itself. I have stayed and heard, and I have shuddered in the adder pit of hell. Why do you not forget it? Why do you not forget it? said Ogma. Forget it, and let it be a dream that has passed away. Let it be forgotten like a dream. Hear one more thing, said Bridget. Hear one more. The earth has cried all night. It has wailed all night long because it has dreamed of beauty. What beauty? What beauty, said Ogma. The earth has dreamed of the white stillness before dawn. The earth has dreamed of the star that goes before the sunrise. The earth. The earth has dreamed of beauty. I wish you had never sung it, said Angus. I can't get it out of my mind. I can't think of anything else. I wish I never heard it. I wish I never known of it. And Bridget said, Angus, Angus. 
You clothe yourself in all the colors of the sun. You clothe yourself in all the colors of the sunlight. Why should you not want to let some of that beauty come to earth, which is crying for it? No, no, said Angus. No, I would not go to earth. I would not want to shudder there. I would not want to see it. But I would, said Medir. I would. He stood up. He tossed his long mane of golden hair till he was surrounded with brightness like daylight. And he said, I would go. I would like to go and see what is there. Well, said Bridget, because the earth has dreamed of beauty, I'm going to throw my mantle around it. Would you come with me? Yes, he said, I'll come with you. I'll follow you. I'll make a way for you. I'll make a space for your cloak. And I'll come too, said Agma. And I'll come, said Nuada. I would come, said Angus. I would come if you were taking the Sword of Light with you. We will take the Sword of Light, they said. We will take the Sword of Light and the Cauldron of Plenty and the Spear of Victory and the Stone of Destiny. We will take them all. We will take them with us. So Bridget set off and Medir followed her. He carried the Sword of Light and Nuwada carried the Spear of Victory and they brought with them the Cauldron of Plenty. And they brought with them the Stone of Destiny and all the gods followed and they dropped. They drop down to earth like a shower of stars, down towards the darkness. But when they came near the great, moving, horrible, self-devouring darkness that is earth, they all drew back, shuddering away from it. All except Medir. Medir dropped right into it, taking the spear in his hand, and he went down, and he trod out that darkness. That monstrous darkness. The way a man treads out grapes in a vineyard. He walked here and he walked there and it moved and he made a path through it and he held up the spear and he waved it this way and that way. He waved it around and he made a path through the dark and he turned and he said cast your cloak Bridget cast your cloak for I have made space for you throw your cloak into it and let there be beauty and music and lavish heartedness upon the earth and so Bridget took her cloak and she cast it all silver and gray with a little flame at the edge of it and she cast it upon the earth and where it fell a great soft mist spread over the earth everywhere the darkness was driven away by that little sliver of flame that was at the edge of the cloak it moved farther and farther and it spread over and it would have gone on spreading like that for a long, long time. But Angus, Angus the youngest of the day Danans, couldn't wait. He leapt down into it and began treading back and forth and playing like a child and calling and calling, <laughs> calling, and calling, <laughs> and crying back to his fellows, hey! 
and they drop down with him. And drifting silver mist closed round them. And, th and through it, they saw each other like images in a dream. And then the Dagda, the great god, took the cauldron of plenty and he put his hands into it. And he said, O cauldron of plenty that gives to everyone what is meat for them. Give me now a gift to give to the earth. And he drew both hands up out of the cauldron and in them he had a great green fire which he threw down over the earth and everywhere it spread there was a greenness like grass a greenness like grass over everything and Angus ran about joyously in that greenness and he played it in the way a child plays in sand he built it up into hillocks he dug it out into little hollows. He dug it into long lanes. And then Mananan, Mananan Maklir, who is the ruler of the seas, he said, he saw that now, that the cloak had spread over almost everything. He could see this great life rising up on the other side of the cloak to look over and see what was happening. And Mananan reached for the sword of light and he lifted it in his hand and he raised it above his head and he waved it and the great monstrous life drew back back in an enormous wave dark green and high and it went back 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 into the sea and he waved it again and this time it was smaller wave a smaller wave violet and blue and then a softer green and very gentle and it drew back he waved it a third time, and this time it was a small wave, white crested and gentle, and the three great waves of Ireland drew themselves into one and broke on the shore. They looked at it. They looked at it all as it lay there, and Bridget said, I'm going to lay the stone of destiny in the earth and let it stay there, that the earth may have power. And she laid the stone of destiny on the top of the earth, and it began to sink in. And when it sank down into the earth, music sounded. And as the music sounded, up from the great waves there flowed water, and it filled all the little pools that Angus had dug, until every pool and every river and every lake was filled with water. And then, then Angus looked at it and he said, I want to stay here. I want to stay here. I want to build things. I want to make things. I would like in this pool to make a little pool like the well of Conla. I would like to make little fishes, silver fishes and gold fishes. And I would like to make an orchard full of golden apples like the ones in Tirna Ong. But the other god said to him, No, 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 earth is new. Do not make in earth the things that are in other places. Not the things of Tirna Mo, not the things of Tirna Ong, not the things of any other place at all. Let the earth make her own things till she is all full of beauty. Yes, yes, said the others. Yes, and let us stay here. 
Let us stay here, all of us, and fashion the things for earth that she needs until there is nothing in the whole earth that is not beautiful. Yes, they said, we'll all stay here. Except for me, said Bridget, I have to go. There are things that I must see in Moy Mel and Turna Mo and Turna Ong and all the other worlds. They are mine to care for. Well, said Agma, if you must go, tie a knot of remembrance in your mantle so that you may always remember this place. And tell us, tell us before you go what we should call it. And Bridget looked at the earth and she saw it and she lifted the mantle. They saw that they were standing as she lifted at the mantle, they saw that they were standing on a green island covered with grass. And the grass was studded with flowers, little flowers, yellow ones, red ones, purple ones, blue ones, all kinds of flowers. And it was altogether beautiful. She said, you shall call it the green island. And its other name shall be the Island of Destiny. And its other name, its other name should be Ireland. And then Agma tied a knot of remembrance on Bridget's mantle. And that is the story of the creation of Earth.